So then he said, rodents of unusual size? I don't think they exist. Trace, we are men of action. Lies do not become us. R.O.U.S.'s do exist. <gasps> Hey, humans of normal sizes. Trace and Matt here for D News. What's up, Matt? I'm, I'm doing very well. Good to see you. Why are tortoises so large? Why are Komodo dragons 300 pounds? Or here's some fuel for either your nightmares or your dreams. Why do rodents on islands grow larger than rodents on uh, regular mainlands? Well, Trace, biologists have been looking into this forever. In 1885, biologist Edward Cope suggested animals grow larger because of competitive advantage. But in 1964, biologist J. Bristol Foster decided to expand on that by studying over 100 species living on islands off the coast of North America and Europe. Foster found that island dwellers, called insular species, tend to be either too large or too small. For example, insular rodents tend toward gigantism, while carnivores, rabbits, deer, hippos, and so on, they actually become dwarfed or smaller. Or put more simply, small animals seem to get bigger and big animals seem to get smaller for some reason. In his paper, Foster's rule said, body size is determined by resources available. I want a teeny tiny hippo. Oh, wouldn't that be cute? Yes, he would until he bit you. As more studies were done, Foster's original points were proven wrong, but today we call this tendency towards dwarfism or giantism the island rule. And a new Duke study expanded on the island rule even more, cataloging more than 1,000 populations in 60 species around the globe. Larger creatures should be able to grab more resources than smaller creatures they found. For example, large predators can catch large, medium, and small prey. But small predators, they're pretty much only get the little ones. In the Duke study, they found animals tended to be way larger than they were supposed to be, like in the top 2.5% for their whole species. Hmm. By studying these insular populations, biologists can and learn how evolution works in closed environments. Some of the creatures got way smaller in the bottom 2.5% of their species, which made sense because the smaller you are, the fewer resources you'll consume, which is great for a closed and limited island life. Most of the dwarfish animals they found were on hot, dry, barren islands where resources restrict their body size. Insular populations are great because it's like nature built a little evolution lab for scientists to look at. By comparing insular populations to their mainland cousins, scientists can hypothesize on why they evolved apart. And we can learn about the potential speed of evolution, too. A 2006 compilation study in PLOS Biology found that evolution just plain happens faster on islands. Hmm. Red deer on the Channel Islands shrunk by a fifth in only 6,000 years. But it's not just topography that makes animals smaller or larger. Human influence can too. A researcher from the Australian Museum says Australian marsupials, like kangaroos, have shrunk in size over the last 40,000 years. He calls this time dwarfing, and it's our fault. Humans hunted the larger ones, making it evolutionarily advantageous to shrink. In the end, why animals get smaller or larger seems to come down to resources and environmental factors. It helps explain mysteries like why tortoises grew so large after going to the Galapagos, but it doesn't explain why the Komodo dragon is still really big. They have to study this way more, but one hypothesis that caught my eye was that the Komodo dragon is a dwarf of a much larger ancestor. If giant rodents didn't keep you up at night, that should. Yeah. If you have a tiny animal, if you could, you know, take one home with you, like Matt's tiny hippo. Yeah, or a giant rodent, which animal would you pick? Tell us in the comments and subscribe for more D News. And while you're at it, check out Matt's other video about why eggs might be the perfect food. When you consume dietary cholesterol, you aren't adding cholesterol to your body by a large margin. Your liver detects the change in cholesterol intake and lowers production accordingly to keep your body on an even keel. But if you want to share your love of eggs, you're going to need a website. Mm -hmm. And no domain extension can help you share your favorite things like a .com or .net domain name. Make sure you put DNews in at checkout so you can get 15% off your domain.com name and web hosting. Thanks for watching DNews. Please subscribe for more and come find us on Twitter. I'm at Trace Dominguez. And I'm at Matt Lieberman. See ya.